Hello and welcome back. And in this session, this video session, we're going to look at using a BJT NPN transistor as a simple low side switch that will allow us in this application to do logic level shifting. Um, overview of where we're gonna go. We're gonna, uh, as I just said, we're gonna use an NPN BJT. We wanna place that into saturation so it's going to act like a switch. So we're going to be going between the saturation region and the cutoff region of that BJT. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we have to look at, uh, first we have to look at the reverse breakdown voltage of the device and make sure that that is large enough, that voltage is large enough to handle the voltage that will be across the collector to emitter when the switch is open. And then we're gonna look at the data sheet and from there we're gonna grab the collector to emitter saturation voltage, the collector current and saturation, the base current and saturation, and the base to emitter voltage and saturation. And many of you probably already recall from previous classes when that device is in saturation, that base to emitter junction is a, a, a forward bias diode. So it has a voltage drop of about 0.7 volts. With these saturation values, we're then going to compute the uh, collector uh, resistance, which is actually a pull-up resistance, and the base resistance, which is going to be a current limiting resistance. Let's just take a quick look at a, a simple schematic, and I don't have the transistor in there yet. We just have a regular switch there. With the switch open, the voltage at that point relative to our reference is equal to 24 volts. Because no current is flowing through the resistor, the, the, all the voltage is at that pin. When we close the switch, we will short that out and we'll bring that down to zero volts. So with it shorted out, and let me just kind of scribble a short in there, then our output voltage goes to zero volts. And we can use this to create high voltage logic levels. Sometimes it's called a, a logic shifter. Let's place the uh, transistor in there. And as you see, we have an, uh, a transistor working in a low side switching mode. And one key thing to point out on here is if we ground, if we ground that pin right there, the transistor will be in its cutoff region. No current will be flowing through the transistor and our output will be 24 volts. So in order to ground that pin, perhaps we have a microcontroller that puts that pin at zero volts of potential. We see then zero on our logic side provides 24 volts on our high voltage logic side. Likewise, I'm gonna take that uh, off. Let me clean that up and clean that up. If we put 3.3 volts onto there, that will drive base current, which hopefully if we drive enough base current, we put this device into saturation. And so this is as close to zero volts as we can. So our logic is inverted with this device. That's one thing to put in the back of your mind when we're looking at these type of logic converters. This graph looks uh, fairly typical. You've seen this probably in a number of courses. This is the collector current versus the collector to emitter voltage for a, a NPN transistor. And it looks very similar to, to MOSFET transistors as well. This region down here, they have specific regions. That is called our cutoff region. And that is with the device, this region is when the device is turned off. Um, it goes all the way out. I only have it going, showing up to 5.5 volts, but for, for devices, it's typically much higher than 5.5 volts. This region is called the active region. And if we were designing an amplifier, a small signal amplifier, we'd wanna be working in that region. And then finally over here, this region, is called saturation. That's the saturation region. So when we are using this device as a switch, we are moving between cutoff, the device is open, the switch is open to saturation. And in that region, the switch is, is closed. And we have very low voltage drop across the collector and emitter.
For this application, I'm going to assume that we have 3.3 volt logic. Uh, as you saw in the schematic, I'm assuming we have a 24 volt DC supply. It might be more. The first thing we want to check on, on selecting a device for this application is, will the reverse breakdown voltage exceed the power supply we have? Up here you see we've got 40 volts for our reverse breakdown voltage, and, and it does, so that, that checks. One thing we want to put in the back of our, our mind is what is the maximum current through this device, and it's 200 milliamps. Now we're doing logic. Typically we don't need a lot of driving current for logic. If this switch had to actually drive more current, this might not be the right transistor to select. And so we're going to look at the, the 2N3904. It's a very common uh, small signal and simple logic uh, switching transistor. The key things we want to look at now on the data sheet to put this into saturation are right over here. What is our saturation voltage and what is the base current when placed, placing this device into saturation? And we see the base current is going to be anywhere from one milliamp to five milliamps to place the device into saturation. And the voltage, when the device is saturated between the base to the emitter, that base to emitter voltage, it is almost a diode drop. We see somewhere between 0.65 to 0.95. Now let's do some calculations. I'm going to bring up the whiteboard and we'll do our calculations there. Recall that the base to emitter voltage drop was about 0.7 volts. I'm going to assume 0.8. I really want this device to be into saturation. And the input on that one pin, let me, let me just draw the schematic right away. Our input pin had a 3.5 voltage logic level voltage and here's our base to emitter drop and so therefore the base current going in i sub base is equal to 3.3 volts minus our base to emitter voltage divided by the resistor in the base that resistor is actually acting as a current limiting device we can solve for that resistor I'm going to assume 0.8 volts for our base to emitter. And I'm going to use, let's say, for example, probably 4 milliamps, perhaps 3 milliamps. Um, yeah, let me, yeah, let's, let's do 3. I don't want to turn this device on too hard. If we do that calculation, that's 2.4 volts um oh, my math's not that good uh yeah 2.2.5 volts or so divided by three milliamps the number I, and i i pre-ran that cal calculation comes out to 100 830 ohms so go ahead and run that calculation not a typical standard value uh let's let's select eight 820 ohms, that is a, a more common value. We could even use probably a 680 ohm to, a resistor here as well if we wanted to. That would uh, turn it on a little bit uh, with a higher current, base current. Or we could go with an even uh, larger resistance, perhaps a 1K ohm, and it still probably would be in saturation. Now, the next thing we want to look at is the, the collector current uh, resistor, R sub C. We're going to assume this is in saturation, and I'm going to assume a saturation voltage of 0 0.3 volts, and this was 24 volts up here. And so our collector current, I sub C, was equal to 24 minus 0 0.3 volts, all divided by R sub C. And if you go back to the data sheet, uh, there's there's a, a 10 to 1 mapping between the base current and collector current when the device is in saturation. 
So I'm going to assume this is 30 milliamps. And if we solve that, uh, we see that RC is about 790 ohms. Again, the, the exact value you use is not as critical. It's, it's, very, it's fairly insensitive to that as long as we are in the range. So we could go to 820 ohms uh, to keep the values the same. We could also go to 680 ohms. We could probably go up to one kilo ohm on that collector resistor. So those are how to do the calculations. Let's, let's go double check our calculations. Here's the same graph for the 2N3904, but expanded in the region, in the saturation region. From our previous calculations, we were shooting for a base current of about 3 milliamps and a collector current of about 30 milliamps, which placed us around this area. And as you can see, we are definitely within the saturation region and we'll probably have a, a collector to emitter voltage somewhere around 50 millivolts, maybe as high as 100 millivolts. The spec on the data sheet had us up at 200 millivolts, possibly 300 millivolts. Now, the one thing to keep in mind with this device, it, if you recall, it was 200 milliamps was its max value. So we really want to be in this region here when we go for saturation. I did do some spice calculations on this and i selected a collector resistance of 820 ohms and i selected a base resistance of 680 ohms and ended up with a collector current of uh, in saturation of 29 milliamps a base current in saturation of 3.6 milliamps and um, our collector emitter was around 50 millivolts as well just to recap the key points of, of doing this design, again, very basic, simple design. Uh, we, we need to drive that BJT into the saturation region, but before we do that, we have to check for the collector to emitter, uh, reverse breakdown voltage to make sure it exceeds the voltage required for application. Then we pulled the saturation parameters off the data sheet, and those were used to compute RC and RB. Thanks for watching the video and have a great day.